All right, let's talk about drawing the full mechanism of the E1 reaction. And we know that uh, the first step of any elimination reaction is loss of leaving group. Um, and then in the E1 case, their second step is proton transfer. And it's also possible that we might need a rearrangement at some point. And it's possible that we might have a proton transfer as our first step before loss of leaving group. And so those are going to be considered optional steps. And it's up to us to figure out if we need them. And I hope I can convince you that that's not something we need to memorize. It's just something we need to understand as we go along and evaluate the reagents and the substrate. So let's take a look at this substrate. This is a secondary substrate. Cl is a good leaving group. So we don't need a proton transfer um, before it can leave. So we can do that right off the bat. And let me uh, continue with black structures, and I can use blue for the, the arrows. And so now we have our secondary cation, and we need to always evaluate secondary cations as potential rearrangement um, players. So can this cation rearrange to form a more stable cation? Well, if we put the cation at this carbon, I think we're going to get a secondary cation, so that's not going to help us. But if we observe that there's a hydrogen right there, uh, and that's sort of on a tertiary carbon, I, which is a carbon that has um, bonds to three other carbons or three other heteroatoms, we can envision a hydride shift where we have a rearrangement occurring and we leave behind a tertiary cation. And now, uh, if I can draw the original hydrogen is right here, he's still right there. And then the blue one that we just moved over is also now there. So that's you can see that that's a fully saturated uh, carbon. It's a tetrahedral carbon with four different groups on it. And now we have a tertiary cation, which is more stable. So that's going to be uh, our preferred cation. So here we did observe the requirement for an optional rearrangement step. And there's no way that you can memorize that it's needed for this particular reaction, because I can draw, I can draw this reaction a thousand different ways, and you may not recognize it as this particular reaction. So you, you can't memorize that the rearrangement step is needed. You, you simply have to observe that based on what you've learned in the past. And so now we're ready for the nucleophilic, uh, actually we're ready for the, uh, the proton transfer step that will cause us to form the alkene. So if I take my base, which is going to be this neutral base, and I uh, do the proton transfer step, we'll end up with this alkene, and this is the product. So we've made uh, a tri-substituted alkene, and we've created that by um, the rearrangement step. And those of you who are paying attention might observe that there's another possibility. We could remove this beta hydrogen. And so if I do that, and I'll just use a different color, we should be able to make a new regioisomer. The thing we have to ask ourselves is, how are these two different products related? Are they just constitutional isomers, or do they happen to be identical? And in this case, I think we'll agree that they're constitutional isomers because the alkene is in a different position relative to the methyl groups. Uh, and so um, then we can answer the question, is one of them a major product and the other a minor product? And I would say they're both tri-substituted, right? There's three groups around each of the alkenes. And so neither of them will be more or less stable. So I would say we have uh, an even mixture, approximately even, uh, of these two products. So that's one example. Uh, and that, in that case, we needed a rearrangement step in the middle. If we look at this example, we might need a rearrangement step somewhere else. So this is a um, poor leaving group. Hopefully you've observed that. 
uh, OH is never going to be a good leaving group, and so we need to turn that into a better leaving group. And oftentimes we can do that simply by uh, using some acid. And I'm going to redraw this acid so that I can draw some proper arrows. So we start off with a proton transfer in this case, and that's one of the optional. We say it's optional, but it basically means we use it occasionally, but don't always use it. Uh, it doesn't. It's not that you have the option to use it. So now we have a better leaving group here, and we can lose the leaving group. This is probably a reversible step as well. Uh, and so now we have a secondary cation. Can we rearrange that to form a tertiary cation? And the only sites we have to work with are these two. And I hope you agree with me that those two sites will both generate a secondary cation. So we're not going to improve the stability of our cation at all. Uh, so it's probably better to uh, do some elimination. So there are two different beta hydrogens. I'm going to use one in blue and one in red. So let's see what happens if we eliminate the, uh, the one in red first. This is the final proton transfer step. We get that and that. Uh, so of course we can get E and Z isomers. Uh, the E will be the major product. Then we can do the same thing with the blue hydrogen. And I'll just use the same water molecule, although it would be a different water molecule, of course. And of course we can get E and Z isomers, and the E will be the major product. Uh, as far as stability of the alkenes, this is a di-substituted alkene. There are two groups around it, same as this alkene. Uh, and so there's really no difference in stability other than the fact that E is more stable than Z. So we'd get a mixture of products in this case. The two E products uh, should be our major products, and the two Z isomers should be our minor products. Uh, and in this case, you saw that we used the um, optional proton transfer step at the beginning of the reaction because we had the poor leaving group. And really, there's nothing to memorize here again. It's simply your ability to observe that this is a poor leaving group. So you should know uh, that OH uh, does not make a good leaving group. Uh, and that requires then it, to turn it into a better leaving group, oftentimes with a proton transfer. Or we could uh, turn the OH into a tosylate.